Oh my god, it is 2020. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I am starting off 2020 on a high note and I will be talking to you guys about my favorite books of 2019. I know that everyone and their mama is making this video right now, but I also have read amazing books in this past year and I want to let you guys know which ones they are because then you might see some books and be like, okay, mm -mm, honey, that will be my next read. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you guys my art journal and in one of those spreads that I showed you guys because I did a flip through video, link somewhere here to that video in the screen, I made a whole page dedicated to my favorite books of 2019. These books are in no particular order except for the last books that I will be showing you guys. These are two books which were just my favorite reads of 2019 and like all the other books are just absolutely amazing but these two are just top notch. <laughs> I have eight books to talk to you guys about but two of them I do not have them with me. The physical copy of these books are in my dorm so let's get those books out of the way. The first book that I want to talk to you guys about is A Meat Market by Juno Dawson. I picked this book up on a whim in the bookstore. I saw it, I loved it because it had holographic letters and that just spoke to my soul but the premise of the book also sounded amazing. The main character's name is like Jana Novak or something like that. She has a very difficult name which I always forget. She is just going with her friends to a theme park having the best time of her life while she gets scouted by a model agent scouter I don't know what the official term is of that person she gets scouted to become a model and she rises into fame from the moment that she starts her career it's insane to basically follow her life from that point on so you follow how she's doing in the modeling world how there is a huge skinny mentality in there like you have to be a certain size otherwise you won't get booked but you also follow her just trying to keep up with her friendships trying to stay in contact with her family and with her boyfriend and if she succeeds in all of that or not i didn't expect to love this book as much as i did it has a special place in my heart because i am very invested into feminism and body positivity and this book definitely like put the spotlight on those two subjects a bit more and i think that this book is so important and it's like a hidden gem not a lot of people have read it i need more people to know about this book and just how amazing juno dawson wrote this this book just ticked a lot of boxes which i loved <laughs> i'm gonna grab myself a cup of tea because i want some look at my mug <laughs> this mug is a mood Okay, it's still really hot. <laughs> Let's continue with book number two, which is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. I read this book at the beginning of the year and I've always been so interested in the premise of this book. Our main character, Henry, has a very hectic personal life. His mom is an addicted smoker. She works super hard. His grandmother has Alzheimer's and I believe his brother was a dropout from college and he just got his girlfriend pregnant. Besides that, Henry also lost his boyfriend because he killed himself. So that's so many things all at once. One of the main things that really caught my attention to this book is that Henry gets abducted by aliens every now and then, and the aliens give him a choice. In 144 days, if I'm correct, the world is gonna end, and Henry can sort of like push a button and decide whether the world is gonna like live on or if everything is gonna stop, if it's gonna end. So we follow Henry's life throughout those 144 days and he meets a new guy and we follow his friends and how his family, how it just all goes together. Sean David Hutchinson's writing style is so amazing. It's like no bullshit, super sarcastic. I loved also the humor in this book. Just such incredible premises. Like, and it's definitely not a sci-fi book, it's contemporary, but there's just this strange element thrown into his books which I really enjoy, so I cannot wait to read more of his books, but I loved it so incredibly much. <laughs> Let's continue on with the books that I have with me in physical form, and the first one that I have here on the pile is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. This is the first book in a companion novel series, so you do not need to read them in a certain order, but you can. In this book, we follow Evie, and she is going to college. So she lives in the UK, so going to college is like going to a new school. She knows no one, but she has had a very like troubled past. Like her mental health hasn't been that amazing. So she feels like if she goes to this new college, she's gonna be the normal kid. Evie becomes friends with Ember and with Lottie, and they become this amazing feminist friend group. Like they even have weekly feminist 
topics that they eventually start talking about and I've learned so much from this book mainly about mental health because Evie has OCD and you follow how she deals with her OCD throughout her first year of college and it becomes so intense and she just wants to be normal and she just wants to date guys. It is such a good book about mental health, friendship, and feminism. I love feminism. It will come back in all of these books probably. It made me learn so much more about OCD and mental health problems and just the characters in this book. Mm -mm. So good. Cannot wait to read more of Holly Bourne's work. The next up I have A Girl Called Shameless by Laura Steven. Laura Steven ever since 2018 has become one of my favorite authors of all time even though she's only published two books under this name. This is the sequel to The Exact Opposite of Okay which was my favorite book of 2018. A book can never make me laugh out loud except for Laura Steven's books. Like her humor is so my type of humor. I love it so incredibly much. She is so so weird and strange and just amazing. Even though in the first book there's definitely one joke which I thought was super insensitive. I really dislike that joke. The rest of them laughed out loud. Love the message of this duology. I won't be telling you guys anything about the sequel but the first book is about Izzy and Izzy hooks up with two guys in one night and one of those instances has been filmed by someone and put on a website. And ever since that happens Izzy gets slut shamed so incredibly much not only by the people in her school but even like nationally it becomes a a huge scandal. Izzy and her best friend try to find out who made this website, who put it up on there. It is such a great feminist read because it's also funny but it definitely points out the things in our society which are very problematic and very true. And we follow her story further on in A Girl Called Shameless and I didn't enjoy it as much as the first book but I still enjoyed it so incredibly much. I just cannot wait for The Love Hypothesis which is Laura Stevens book which is coming out in 2020. I'm so ready for it. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm only holding up one book but the sequel to this story is also just as amazing. I love that one just as much but that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and the second book is The Vanishing Stare which I adored just as much. My heart is just racing when I talk about these books. It's crazy. In Truly Devious we follow two different timelines. I believe one in 1936. Albert Ellingham created Ellingham Academy because he wanted to create a school which was full of secret pathways and riddles and puzzles that students could solve. Just shortly after the school opened Albert Ellingham's wife and daughter get kidnapped and this has become one of the most well-known like unsolved mysteries and there was only one note that was left behind which was signed by Truly Devious. The second storyline that we follow is in the now and we follow Stevie Bell who is gonna attend Ellingham Academy and she is obsessed with this unsolved mystery and she wants to solve it. It is a private boarding school in which you can follow different paths of your study. It's like whatever that you're interested in you will learn about that in Ellingham Academy with your like private teacher and stuff like that. It is so cool. This is the map of Allingham Academy which just tells you so much about the vibes of this book. And you have all these different houses that the students stay in so Stevie becomes friends with five other people. The book says that her housemates are the inventor, the novelist, the actor, the artist, and the jokester. But then along her like school year one of her fellow students gets murdered and again a note pops up saying that Truly Devious has returned. I never knew that I would love a murder mystery book. I was like I love it in like a series or in a movie movie form but I think that reading a murder mystery book I will find it way too slow. That was totally not the case. I was obsessed with this book from page one on. A lot of people said that they needed to get into the story. There are a lot of characters so if you do not like that then that's maybe a little bit of a problem because there are so many characters but I love the whole vibe of just Ellingham Academy solving the mystery finding out lots of new things and just the boarding school oh my god and the vanishing star was just as amazing the third book is coming out in like three weeks and I'm freaking out because I have forgotten so many of the details already but I just need to read that book because I'm obsessed with the two timelines and just everything about this is perfect I love you Maureen Johnson this is so great <laughs> and then we have landed upon my two all-time favorite books of this year. I believe that all of the authors of my favorite books, I hadn't read a single book of them before. So basically I've discovered just amazing authors. The next author that I'm gonna show to you guys is definitely one of my new 
favorite authors of all time. I'm gonna buy all of her books. My two favorite reads of 2019 are Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So many people are talking about her books, so it is no big surprise that I'm showing you guys to them as well. I definitely love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo more than Daisy Jones and the Six, even though I love this one as well. We follow Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones was a separate artist before she joined the band the Six, and we follow their story as a combined band and how they eventually broke up because that has always been a mystery. The story of how they kind of broke up and like the things that they went through, it is being told in an interview style type of way, which is so interesting and it reads so well, <laughs> which I didn't expect. So we follow their hectic, intense band lives throughout the 60s and 70s, I believe, and just a little bit further on as well. Taylor Jenkins Reid writes such amazing characters and they are just so complex and flawed and you just feel for them. This was incredible. I was so confused at first about this book. I thought that this was nonfiction, but it's not, it's fiction. If you love the 60s, 70s, and you adore bands, like for instance, I'm just gonna say something, Queen, The Beatles, Rolling Stones, stuff like that, I believe that you will be very interested in this story as well. But I loved, oh my God, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. You follow Evelyn Hugo, and she is this huge Hollywood star from the 50s to the 80s. Yes, she has had seven husbands, but she's had a very private life. She never talked about her life that much until she reaches out to Monique Grant, if I'm saying her name correctly. Monique Grant has just become a very like starting journalist, so she feels very astonished when the huge Hollywood star Evelyn Hugo asks her to write a book about her life and you follow her life story throughout the seven husbands and there is a hidden romance in here which was just amazing i cried at the end of this book again because you feel for all of the characters because they are so real. You feel like you are living the life of Evelyn Hugo together with her. I will be rereading these books for many years to come and I wanna read all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books in 2020, which was one of my goals. Read these books, they were just so great. They have a special place in my heart, just like all the other books that I mentioned today, but those were my favorite reads of 2020. I am so excited for this upcoming year. I'm gonna try and read whatever I feel like. I don't think I'm gonna make any TBR videos as well because I enjoy doing that, <laughs> even though that sounds so strange, but I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to kind of like attach myself to a certain like amount of books or a certain type of book that I need to read. I just wanna go with the flow and see what I'm feeling. I hope that you guys are gonna have an amazing 2020, an amazing decade, and just be yourself, try to accept yourself a bit more. That is at least what I'm gonna try and do. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. So because I'm a booktuber, of course I have Goodreads, but I also have Instagram, Snapchat, plus an email address, and links to those will also be in the description bar down below. Just thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.